Well, good morning to you on this Palm Sunday of 2020. This online service is coming to you from the Kearsarge Community Presbyterian Church in New London, New Hampshire. Our endeavor is to continue this online opportunity until social di distancing is no longer required. Uh, so stay tuned. Well, the pastor of this congregation is the Reverend Bob Merrill. He's presently on a long-deserved and long-planned sabbatical and will be returning the end of June. I'm uh, Tom Atkins, a retired Presbyterian pastor, and I have the great privilege of serving as the supply pastor here at KCPC until Pastor Bob is returned. Well, his sabbatical isn't a, a, an extended vacation. A sabbatical allows a pastor the chance to rest and reflect on his or her faith. The time away from regular duties is, a, is providing Pastor Bob, after 40 years of ordained ministry, the time needed to assess his personal and professional goals that have been put on the back burner. His sabbatical will help him reassess his present goals and objectives even as retirement comes closer to his horizon. And even though he's not in our area, almost daily he remains connected and involved in the life of this congregation online with the online communication. We can all be assured that especially during this very challenging and unexpected pandemic, uh, we here at KCPC will always be on Pastor Bob's mind and in his heart. And indeed, my brothers and sisters in Christ, we are all being shaken uh, burdened and challenged in this lifetime by the worldwide COVID-19 virus. It's as if we are now being sequestered into a forced sabbatical by this disease. Yes, this is a time when we, each in our own way, will be assessing what is important in our lives, our health, our loved ones, our livelihoods, and certainly our faith. Well, this Palm Sunday is our remembrance of how the clamoring crowds in Jerusalem were so hopeful that God was sending someone to bring salvation to their world, someone who would bring a sense of peace and transformation in their troubled lives. And so let us also come together now through this electronic phenomenon as individuals and as a family of faith to proclaim, blessed is he, who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, our true physician and healer, be merciful to us and bring us your aid in these troubled times. Heal all our sickness and every affliction of your people. Drive out our infirmities of soul and body. Free us from all disease and especially from this pestilence. We place in your gentle heart the elderly, the frail, people with disability, children, young people, and families, our indigenous people, and those who are poor, lonely, and isolated. As you walk with us, free us from fear and give us patience and hope together through our loving care for each other. In your mercy, deal also with the causes of our frightful condition that in curing our lack of faith and spiritual weakness, you may also remedy our bodily ills. On this Palm Sunday, O oh God, we place our trust in you through our promised Savior, our risen Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Well, this morning, as our call to worship, I would like to share with you a litany that will that comes to us from Psalm 118. Listen now what this, these words from Psalm 118 says. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Hosanna to God. Hosanna in the highest. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. And all who fear God say, his love endures forever. Hosanna to God. Hosanna in the highest. With the Lord on our side, what can we fear? What can mankind do? Hosanna to God. Hosanna in the highest. We shall triumph over those who surround us and stand in confidence in the Lord our God. Hosanna to God. Hosanna in the highest. 
The Lord is our strength and our might. The Lord has become our salvation. Hosanna to God, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna to God, Hosanna in the highest. Amen. But just as we're, we're into the habit now of having to cleanse ourselves, our hands, to wash our hands regularly, that's also a part of our spiritual life, too, that we need to come in confession to the Lord about our sins and ask for God to cleanse us from our sins. And so listen now to this prayer of confession. O oh Lord, who on this day entered the rebellious city that later rejected you, we confess that our wills are as rebellious as Jerusalem's, that our faith is often more show than substance, and that our hearts, as regularly as our hands, are in need of cleansing. Have mercy on us, Son of David, Savior of our lives. Help us to lay at your feet all that we have and all that we are, trusting you to forgive what is sinful, to heal what is broken, to welcome our praises and to receive us as your own. This we pray through your saving grace. Amen. Amen. And there's assurance that indeed we are receiving cleansing and forgiveness through this assurance that comes also to us from Psalm 118. Let those who fear the Lord say, His steadfast love endures forever. Out of our distress, I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me free. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. I shall not die but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. And so it is. In Christ, God answers us and sets us free. In Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. And at this time, I had asked um, Jason to provide us with music at this time. comes to us from Matthew, the 21st chapter, verses 1 through 11. When Jesus and the 12 disciples near Jerusalem, having arrived at Bethphage on Mount Olives, Jesus sent two disciples with these instructions. Go over to the village across from you. You'll find a donkey tethered there, her colt with her. Untie her and bring them with you. And if anyone asks what you're doing, say, the master needs them. He will send them with you. This is the full story of what was sketched early by the prophet when he said, Tell Zion's daughter, Look, your king is on his way, poised and ready, mounted on a donkey and on a colt, full of a pack animal. And so the disciples went and did exactly what Jesus told them to do. They led the, the donkey and the colt out laid some of their clothes on them, and Jesus mounted. Nearly all the people in the crowd threw their garments down on the road, giving him a royal welcome. Others cut branches from the trees and threw them down as a welcome mat. Crowds went ahead and crowds followed, all of them calling out, Hosanna to David's son. Blessed is he who comes in God's name. 
Hosanna in the highest. As Jesus made his entrance into Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken. Unnerved, people were asking, what's going on here? Who is this? The afraid crowd answered, this is the prophet Jesus, the one from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the holy gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Well, my younger brother, David, until his retirement two years ago, was involved as a uh, director for the uh, adult drug and alcohol rehabilitation ministries for the Salvation Army for 30 years. Uh, one of his great talents is preaching in a way that engages attention and interest of those coming into the four-month-long uh, rehabilitation pro program. I asked him if I could share with a few re revisions the uh, Palm Sunday story version that he once preached. And he used a, a pretty unusual introduction. Now realize that uh, some of those guys going through the uh, rehab program were pretty tough characters and could relate to my brother's version of the Palm Sunday events. My brother David's introduction to the what Trans to what transpired and what has been referred to now as Palm Sunday went like this. Jesus is gathered with his disciples just outside of town, and he says to them, Boys, you go thou into Laconia tonight to the biker's bar called the New Moon Saloon, and you will find parked outside a tricked-out Orange County chopper. It's deep green, long, lean, and super clean with a 124-inch S&S twin cam, a Baker 6-speed, and a 240 rear tire. It's got a handmade left-side syringe exhaust and, and shock-sprung seat, a cool set of bars, a long and narrow custom tank with red accents from front to back. Go sit on it and take it off the kickstand. And when a big dude in leathers and a bandana comes out with a cue stick in his hand, shouting through his beard, touch my bike one more time and thou wilt take one short ride to hell. Well, just say to him, the master has need of it. Then he replieth unto thee. Well, you didn't explain it like that, little man. And he'll throw you the keys and says, just bring it back when thou art done. And so it happened as the master said. And when John came tooling up on the bike and revs it with a popping roar for effect, Jesus looketh upon it and says, sweet. <laughs> well, my brother David ends his gospel version with this comment. Maybe it didn't happen exactly like that. The twin cams hadn't come out until much later. Well, that was the end of his introduction. Well, by the way, my brother is a motorbiker, and he obviously knows how to describe a smooth riding bike. Well, clearly, Palm Sunday is one of the most joy joyful days of the Christian year. It's a day that involves a king and a colt, plus crowds and cloaks. They weren't social distancing that day. Jesus arrives in Jerusalem as a king. He's riding on a colt, and crowds are laying their cloaks on the ground before him as he rides, and they're crying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. You see, the people are tired of their corrupt King Herod, and they want Jesus now to be their ruler. Well, we know this story very well, and it's easy for us who grew up in the church to grasp the meaning of Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a colt while crowds praise him and roll out the red carpet by spreading their cloaks on the road. The crowd just goes wild and hey, so would we if we were there. Well, we wave our palm branches and everyone is shouting and jumping and jostling to get a better view. The king, the son of David is coming. Kind of sounds like the uh, political campaigns we're having to endure now, doesn't it? but maybe more so than ever this Palm Sunday, we really want Jesus to be our king and to rule our world with love and justice and to bring healing to a world suffering and dying from a pandemic. 
But the Palm Sunday story is just not about a king and a cult or a crowd and their cloaks. Perhaps Palm Sunday would be easier to understand if we had our own version of the story. If our own version of the story, in our own version, Jesus would be riding into town and confronting King Herod and the one and the one with the biggest crowd, with the most electoral votes, if you will, could win. But our expectations are turned upside down. Instead, as we read from the Apostle Paul's letter to the believers in, in Philippi, Jesus emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Jesus emptied himself, taking himself the form of a slave so that he looked for all the world like an ordinary, very common, nondescript, perhaps even marginalized human being. But precisely because Jesus emptied and humbled and, and lowered and abased, abased himself, God exalted him and made him the king of all creation. Well, maybe, maybe, just maybe, as the church is now required to distance itself from our cozy pews together, our theme this year should be for us to get off our donkey. That theme isn't about making a disparaging remark about Palm Sunday or certainly not about Jesus riding a donkey. This season theme has to do with the par parable that Jesus told of the Good Samaritan and how the Samaritan got off his donkey to help a desperate soul who had been beaten and robbed and left half deaf, dead along the road. You know the story. When other respected and religious travelers had avoided any effort to assist the wounded man, it was the Samaritan instead, the one who came to the man's aid to put him on his donkey and then paid for the man to receive shelter and care until he was well. The Samaritan became the servant of the one in need. So get off your donkey is our challenge to all Christian believers. Go the extra mile to be God's answer, to be God's servant to any who are in need. At the end of the triumphant parade, Jesus also got off his donkey and went to the extreme to bring salvation to people dying from their sins. And that's the Good Friday story and the triumphant story of Easter. But, uh-oh, what's the first thing we read in the Gospel of Matthew immediately after what, after Jesus' uh, triumphant ride into Jerusalem? He went to the temple in Jerusalem and he cleaned house. Whoa, well, that's a whole other sermon that I'll preach later on, maybe. Well, I really must be brief this morning since these, since there is so much going on in our lives and in our world on this Palm Sunday. Let me make just one point before I conclude. Please understand, there's nothing wrong with you riding a donkey. There's an old fable that has been passed down for generation that tells about an elderly man who was traveling with a boy and a donkey. <clears throat> and as they walked through a village, the man was leading the donkey and the boy was walking behind. And the town's people said uh, to the old man that he was a fool. <clears throat> for not riding. So to please them, he climbed up on the animal's back. When they came to the next village, the people said the old man was cruel to, the, to let the child walk while he enjoyed the ride. So to please them, he got off and set the boy on the, boy's, uh, the animal's back and continued on his way. Well, in the third village, people accused the child of being lazy for making the old man walk. And the suggestion was made that they both ride. And so the man climbed on and they set off again. In the fourth village, the townspeople were indignant at the cruelty to the donkey because he was made to carry two people. The frustrated man was last seen carrying the donkey down the road. Well, to be popular with everyone, 
You have to please everyone, and that is just impossible. Listen, popularity is not the reason to get off your donkey. Getting off your donkey is a good and right thing when you're doing it with the intention of helping someone or using the donkey to help others ride to carry and to carry their burdens. The point is, we are to be like Christ by humbly willing to be a servant to others. Jesus said as a part of his Sermon on the Mount to back in Matthew, the fifth chapter, he said, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. You see, that is how we truly give glory to God, even without waving palms. Amen. But we're all concerned and burdened about what people are going through in this time. We may know them personally. One you may not know is Laurie Bride, uh, who called Pastor Bob to tell him that her brother-in-law, Jim Bride, has the COVID virus and has some cardiac, cardiac issues that goes along with it. Fortunately, at this time, as far as we know, he's in stable condition. Uh, uh, Jim Bride is is uh, uh, is Peter uh, Peter's brother. But also you may want to know news about Paul Clark. Uh, he died my, in a Miami hospital late uh, Saturday night. Uh, Pastor Bob actually prayed with Paul over the phone and Ab Abigail, Paul's daughter, said that he was able to hear Bob's prayer despite not being able to respond because of the uh, ventilator. And Abby has also said that she and her brother Nate uh, are planning to have a service probably after Pastor Bob returns sometime in July. For now, his body will be cremated and will stay with her in Florida. But let us now take time to pray for those that are in need and to pray for our world and our own needs. Let us pray. Well, you alone, O oh Lord, and give comfort and hope in the face of despair and fear. Send your spirit to intercede for us, for we don't know how to pray in the face of so much pain, so much confusion, so much need. We pray for your power and grace to rest upon all who are in pain and grief over loved ones. We pray for those who wait to hear news, for those whose faith is battered, for those who search anew for their forgotten faith. We pray for all who struggle to understand this circumstance. Assure them all of your faithfulness and grant them your peace that passes understanding that they may know that through Christ, death no longer has the last word. We pray for the sick and infected, O oh God. Help and heal them sustain their bodies and spirits, and contain the spread of infection. We pray for our vulnerable populations, uh, for our elderly and those suffering from chronic diseases. We pray for the young and the strong. Give them the necessary caution to keep them from unwittingly spreading the, this disease. Inspire them rather to help. For our local, state, and federal governments, O oh Lord, we ask you to help our elected officials as they allocate the necessary resources for combating this pandemic. And we certainly pray for our scientific community that's leading the charge to understand this disease. Give them knowledge and wisdom to come up with answers we need. We pray for our frontline health workers. We thank you for their vocational call to service. We also pray, God, that you will keep them self and, uh, safe and healthy and uh, keep their families safe and healthy. Help them to be knowledgeable about the diagnosis and treatment of, of this disease. Help them to stay clear-minded in the midst of, surrounding, of this sur surrounding panic. Give them compassion for every 
patient in their care. And oh God, help Christians in healthcare to exhibit extraordinary peace so that many would ask about the reason for their hope. Give them opportunities to proclaim the good news of the gospel. And oh Lord, we trust that you are good and you do good. Teach us to be your faithful people in this time of global crisis. Help us to follow in the, the footsteps of our faithful shepherd, Jesus, who laid down his life for the sake of love. May we love, serve, and worship together, being filled with faithfulness and joy. May we grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To you, O oh God, be glory both now and forever. Amen. And again, Jason will be providing us with special music, and especially at this time, uh, I've asked him to share with us the uh, music for Great is Thy Faithfulness. But let me share with you the words of that hymn as our closing hymn. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not, as thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, my hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me.
closing and in benediction, dear brothers and sisters, claim for yourselves the comfort and assurance that comes from God's faithfulness. Walk without fear through the shadows of life and grow your faith in the sunshine of God's love shining for you through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Go now in peace. Amen. We invite you to visit us here again on Easter Sunday next week, and, and we pray that you'll continue to support the ministries of our Kearsarge Community Presbyterian Church, especially in these times. God bless you. Keep the faith.